This has been a Now Media Television feature presentation. All rights reserved. In today's episode of Pain Diaries, we have a special guest, Dr. Darren Mitchell. He's a chiropractor offering many types of solutions to spine and joint problems. He also provides nutritional fixes. Also, we have a few other important guests that will discuss all we need to know about insurance coverage and will also feature medical technologies that are changing medicine. Remember, you can find me, Dr. Suzanne Manzi, at performancepain.com or you can call 346-217-1111. Performance Pain and Sports Medicine has two locations. One is at 4126 Southwest Freeway, Suite 1700 in Houston, Texas, 77027. And we're in the penthouse of the T-Mobile Tower next to Greenway Plaza. You can also find me in my satellite location in League City, Texas, officing out of League City Spine and Sports at 1200 East Main Street. And don't forget to watch the Pain Diaries on the following channels. Houston, 2110, Beaumont, 2710, Atlanta, 2210, Lake Charles, 2110, College Station, 1410, Eagle Pass, 24, Piedras Negras, 24. And you can also hear us in Chicago on 102.9 FM and 104.3 FM in Huntsville, Texas. Don't forget, tune into Spotify, Apple Podcast, and Amazon Music and follow us on all social media and our digital platforms such as nowmedia.com. Please note, the information in this show is for informational purposes only and is not medical advice. It is not a substitute for professional medical advice, and I urge you to seek medical advice from your physician regarding any medical condition. Reliance on the information provided in this show is provided solely at your own risk. Hello, and I'm Dr. Suzanne Manzi, and this is Pain Diaries. Dr. Suzanne Manzi here with Performance Pain and Sports Medicine in Houston, Texas. I welcome you back to Pain Diaries on Now Media Television. I'm going to be talking about a topic that has stirred up some controversy over the past few weeks, but the studies have surprisingly been going on for years. When our cartilage or the cushioning between our bones or our joints start to deteriorate due to age and wear and tear, we call this osteoarthritis. This condition can lead to the bones rubbing on each other at its end stage. This condition is prevalent in people usually over the age of 45, affecting usually one in five people. The number's staggering, affecting 32.5 million adults in the United States. It can cause disability, and pain usually affects the knee joint. Pain, swelling, limping, leg weakness, stiffness, soreness, crunching, these are all symptoms, and people seek treatments for arthritis. About 10% of people affected seek non-surgical treatments. They can also opt for a total knee replacement if they qualify, if it's bad enough, or it's bone on bone. But non-surgical treatments include pain relief with corticosteroid injections or hyaluronic acid injections, which are gel. On November 29th, 2022, two studies were presented at the Radiologic Society of North America, and they found that corticosteroid injections were associated with the progression of arthritis. This could mean these steroid injections may actually worsen the osteoarthritis that's present. I, I couldn't believe my eyes. There currently is an ongoing study called the Osteoarthritis Initiative, and this is a multi-center longitudinal observational study of about 5,000 partici participants now in its 14th year of follow-up. Researchers in both studies chose cohorts from this initiative. So in the first study, researchers at the University of California in San Francisco included 210 
osteoarthritis initiative participants. 70 of them received intraarticular injections, meaning into the joint. And then the control group, 140 people, did not receive injections during a two-year per period. Of those 70 people that received the injections, 44 had steroid injections and 26 had the gel injections. The treatment and the control groups were matched by age, sex, body mass index, pain, physical activity scores, and the severity of their arthritic disease. Then what they did was perform an MRI on all the patients at the time of injections, two years before and two years after. And those MRI scans were assessed using a special grading system for knee arthritis. And that focuses on the meniscus, which is the cushion in between our joints, the bone marrow lesions, the cartilage and the joint effusions, which is swelling or increased fluid in the joint, and the ligaments, which is what hold the bones together. These researchers identified that osteoarthritis progression by comparing the imaging scores from the initial scans and the two-year follow-up scans. This is the first direct comparison of corticosteroid and hyaluronic acid injections using the semi-quantitative whole organ assessment of the knee with MRI, said Upsana Ubdhadi Bhattaraja, MD, and the research fellow in the Department of Radiology at University of California, San Francisco. When they conducted their statistical analysis, it showed that steroid injections were significantly associated with the overall progression of osteoarthritis in the knee, specifically in the lateral meniscus, lateral cartilage, and medial cartilage. They found hyaluronic acid or gel knee injections were not significantly associated with these progressions of the arthritis in the knee. So compared to the control group, those group that received the gel or hyaluronic acid injections showed a decreased progression of osteoarthritis, especially in the bone marrow lesion. So then they, another study was done by researchers at the Chicago Medical School of Rosalind Franklin University of medicine, and a science-conducted case control study comparing the radiographic progression of osteoarthritis in patients who received injections of steroid and hyaluronic acid again. <coughs> a cohort of 150 patients with similar baseline characteristics were chosen from the Osteoarthritis Initiative database. 50 patients got steroid injections, 50 patients got the gel or hyaluronic acid, and 50 were not injected over a 36-month time period. They were also matched by sex, body mass index, and x-ray findings. Patients underwent x-ray imaging of the knee at baseline and then again two years later. So this group used x-ray, whereas the first group used MRI. These researchers analyzed the x-ray imaging, including joint space narrowing, formation of bone spurs, and bone thickening around the knee cartilage. Compared to patients who received an injection of the gel or no treatment at all, patients injected with the corticosteroids had significantly more osteoarthritis progression, including medial joint space narrowing, which is a hallmark of knee osteoarthritis. So now we have proof with published data to help us make more informed decisions and maybe even change the guidelines, possibly in the future. Although steroid injections are still the current standard of care, more research proving these changes will likely eventually change the guidelines. This is important for you if you or a loved one is a patient. So what can you do? Based on the existing data, I recommend my patients to be proactive for themselves. You can refuse the steroid injection if you're offered. If you're stuck being able to afford what only insurance will cover, then based on these studies, you would be better off with the hyaluronic acid shots, which are usually covered as well. You should know there are studies that show that these shots may have weak effects in general, but the importance of the image guidance into the knee joint is paramount to ensure the medication makes it into the joint. If the medication doesn't get into the joint, it's likely not going to work. Cadaver studies have also shown that 70% of knee injections make it into the joint when performed blindly. We at Performance Pain and Sports Medicine only use image guidance for all of our knee injections, whether it be with ultrasound or x-ray guidance, so we can guarantee the medicine makes it into the joint, so we get great results. Based on existing randomized control trials that have compared the gel injections to platelet-rich plasma, also called PRP, for treatment of knee arthritis, P 
PRP produces superior effects as well, based on many studies. However, PRP is often not covered by insurance. Hence, if you're trying to get the knee injection that will help your arthritis the most and the cost is not as critical, then PRP would be a good way to go based on what level, high level research actually exists. Another thing, food for thought, many physicians have been using NSAIDs, which are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These drugs like Advil, Aleve, Celebrex, Mobic, the list goes on and on, and steroid injections, we've been using these for our whole careers as doctors, but because both seem to help our patients function and they're covered by insurance, they've become the standard of care and have been written into the guidelines. There's been an increased amount of research on harm lately, in particular with steroid knee injections, and some physicians have begun to question their use and have begun offering alternatives like hyaluronic acid and platelet-rich plasma, like us at Performance Pain and Sports Medicine, as well as many other doctors around the country. An educated patient who's involved in their own care simply gets better health care than one that doesn't take the time to arm themselves with this information. These new studies on knee arthritis progression are great examples of how patients need to be actively involved in shaping the care that they receive. A lot of this information was taken from these two recent studies that were uh, shown and also by Chris Centeno, a former PM&R graduate from Baylor College of Medicine where I also graduated. He has a blog and he is very excited about these topics and is full of information. So I thank them all for for their education in this, in this department. So all of this, great food for thought. I'm Dr. Suzanne Manzi with Performance Pain and Sports Medicine, and this is Pain Diaries. We will be right back after a commercial break. Welcome back again to Pain Diaries. We're going to explore more insurance options. I'm pleased to introduce Emily Trevino, Now Media TV and Pain Diaries welcomes you back to the show. Thanks for having me again. Of I course. I want to talk today about the pains of Medicare. Ooh, tell us. So we entered our, basically the enrollment period for Medicare is over. So every year on October 15th, it allows it's an opportunity for people to go out and shop for a plan and it ended December 7th and we have a lot of people who waited to the last minute and they're calling us like what are my options what can we do and unfortunately there's not a lot of options left at this point so we're having to field a lot of those calls and see if maybe there's some special circumstances that they can enroll in. I can imagine that is a headache for a lot of people because they didn't know the rules to begin with. And so your job and my job is to educate them on a daily basis to say, hey, what insurance do you have? How are you using it? Do you have exactly. to be aware that you need to might possibly use it in the future? And so you need to know what the, the rules are so you can make sure you have the best insurance coverage to right. get what you need. And I feel bad for a lot of our seniors or our Medicare beneficiaries because a lot of times you know, they're watching TV and there's all these misleading information and then they have all the internet is like a whole nother slew of craziness and then Facebook we have a lot of seniors on social media they right. are on Facebook they're on YouTube they're accessing information they want to know the right information and that's why it's so important to work with a trusted agent but here's the deal there are special circumstances so if you miss your enrollment season or your period to change your plan you can actually give us a call and we have a whole lot of reasons why you may qualify to be able to join another plan. So there's things like maybe you move to a different state mm. or a different county. Um, perhaps you could qualify for extra benefits like prescription drug help. Maybe you could qualify for um, Medicaid, state Medicaid. Our okay. offices also help um, people apply for that as well. Um, there's also, if you have certain chronic illnesses, like if you have diabetes, if you have mm -hmm. lung disorders, high blood pressure, just different um, illnesses like that, sometimes are good qualifications to join into another health plan and go over some options. But if you don't have any of those, 
January 1st, from January 1st to March 31st is open enrollment season. That means you get to one time chance to switch your plan to something that either you're gonna switch back to a plan you used to like or shop for something else if you're not happy with what you're at. So you have to give us a call, 832-308-0123, and we will make sure that we at least see if you can qualify to change now, and if not, in January, you'll have that one-time opportunity to change. So, there you have it. Changing is potentially an option for you. It is. But, again, you don't know. It's probably impossible to find this answer anywhere on the internet. So, again, you know, Emily and her trusted team of insurance agents might be the best place to start with. Yes, having an agent that you can talk to on a regular basis that can help guide you through the processes, give you options, is very key when you're looking at who you want to work with. The problem is, is there's so many great agents out there, and just like every industry, there's also some not as good ones. <laughs> I try to be, make that as positive as possible, but For sure. the thing is, is staying in the know is our responsibility as insurance agents and being able to help guide you through whatever situation you're going to. One of the biggest group of clients that we see having the most confusion is people who are retiring from their work coverage. They already turned 65, they're probably 67, 68, on up, and they're not getting the information like they would when they're turning 65. All the health insurance companies, all the insurance agents are educating all the people aging into Medicare, but they're not really targeting the people and educating the people after they go to retire at a later age. So there are Medicare options for people. There's certain times to pick up your Part um, A and your Part B and or, I should say, and you really want to work with an agent or with us mm -hmm. to help guide you through that transition so that you can make sure that you choose the right option for you. Emily, so your agency is in Houston, right? Yes, so we're in Houston. We're also in 34 other states. Okay. So we're licensed and we take pride in each state that we work in. So a lot of times when you have these national call centers call you, they just use a database of plans, but they don't really understand the market nuances. Mm -hmm. So our agency actually works with the insurance carriers at the local level to make sure that we understand the different hospitals that they understand the different pharmacies. Here in Texas, we have HEB as a pharmacy. The call centers don't know what HEB is. They're super <laughs> confused by it. And there's a lot of wonderful local owned pharmacies as well. Um, and it's really just really important for agents to understand those nuances in every single state and every single town. Right. And a lot of people don't make that effort to learn about it. So we actually make that extra effort to do that. No, that's great that you are almost nationwide. And you know, if you're serving multiple states, you have to know the nuances of each state. And so that's yes. great that you have that personalized touch to help people make the right decision for them and their loved ones. Right, it's more of that local feel. Even though I'm not in that said state, we do know a lot about it. So we have mm -hmm. a cheat sheet um, that we make, you know, that all of our agents are trained on, that they can reference so they understand you know, what pharmacies, what hospital systems, like we have graded hospital systems. So we work with, you know, we know what the top hospitals are in any given state, <laughs> in every given city, so good. that's good to know. Absolutely. But we wanna make sure that ultimately that clients can go to the hospitals, the doctors, the specialists, the pain doctors, whoever <gasps> that they wanna access, we wanna make sure they have access to, to their medical benefits. Yeah, and you definitely don't want an insurance plan at a hospital that you know you don't necessarily like or want to be admitted to if you do right. get sick. So you need to have the right plan, right. especially to cover where you need to go. That's exactly right. And giving that information, first of all, that's how you can identify if you're working with the right agent. Because if they're not mm. asking you that question, hang up the phone <laughs> and it's time to call us at Wise Insurance. 832-308-0123. <laughs> that's right. So to bring this all kind of to a close is I really want seniors or people that are aging into Medicare or mm -hmm. retiring to make sure you understand deadlines and timelines because it can make the biggest difference in you accessing your health care the following year. So don't get caught up in the hype on TV, don't get caught up on the uh, social media ads and things like that. Um, this is a very highly regulated industry and we want to make sure that you're protected and that you get into your health plan so that you can have access to it year round. 
Absolutely. Well, Emily, thank you so much. We totally appreciate all the information you've pr provided us today about timing into the world of Medicare insurance. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again here on the show in Houston, yes. Texas on 2110 on Now Media TV. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to Pain Diaries. Dr. Suzanne Manzi here with Performance Pain and Sports Medicine. I am proud to introduce my dear colleague and the owner of Natural Health Houston. He has an amazing chiropractic office located on Norfolk Street in Houston, Texas. I'm excited to talk about the importance of spine and joint care as well as nutrition through chiropractic therapy. Dr. Darren Mitchell is located in Houston, Texas and he could be found at www.naturalhealthhouston.com and the address of his office is 2211 Norfolk Street, suite number 105-77098. Info at naturalhealthhouston.com or call 713-522-9814. He also has two associate docs that are amazing, Dr. Jody Wilson and Dr. Kennedy Tyre. I've been treated by all three of them and they are really great and offer amazing chiropractic care. So Dr. Mitchell, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I wanted to really, you know, pick your brain and talk to you about what makes your chiropractic office different than other chiro offices. Very good. You know, I thought it might be nice to start with, you know, how we got introduced to, you know, being in chiropractors and it all falls back to my, my dad. My dad was a uh, like a repeat offender, multiple, you know, auto accidents, you know, agriculture accidents. He worked in oil field, you know, so he was he was kind of rough on his body, mm -hmm. and so he sought treatment from a local chiropractor there in Kansas, you know. But with his work schedule, many times he couldn't, you know, get in, and so he basically recruited my older brother to kind of <laughs> do a home version of what the chiropractor did. Now I know it wasn't probably, you know, professional, but it it did the most of piqued his interest into looking into seeing how you can use your hands to make somebody feel better. And so he, uh, he changed his major from agricultural and he decided to go into, you know, chiropractic. Well, after he left, my middle brother was already out of the house. And so who got recruited to put dad's hip in, you know, yours truly. And so I, I kind of followed in my brother's footsteps and went to Texas chiropractic college. And, and, you know, that's where it all began. So it started with an experience of a family member followed by, you know, uh, my brother being the first one to go to college and, and me following into his footsteps. So that's <laughs> kind of how the whole story got started. Oh, okay. Wow. That's so, a, so you're home-based home chiropractic therapy. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it was definitely, definitely not, a, you know, everything that, it, you know, some people do. But I think the most interesting part was going through chiropractic college, you know, I, I felt like that's what I wanted to do and, mm -hmm. and then there was about a time during that, that, that tenure that I'm like, well, maybe I should have gone to med school, maybe I should have, you know, done something different, maybe I can't do everything that, that I, I thought it was going to be and, and so I, I struggled a little bit with, you know, the profession until I, I kind of found some good teachers and I found some, some good mentors. And, and I think the, the chiropractic college gives you a nice base, but what I always try to tell my patients is our education starts when we graduate. And so that's one thing I pride ourselves in on how our practice has really evolved over the years into, you know, not just from a mechanical practice, but to, you know, to biochemistry, to using, you know, the body electric and, and even how emotions mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems, uh, you know, are all just interweaved in, you know, helping people with, with their pain. And so that's, that's kind of how we kind of got started. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm a big fan of, you know, that integrative type care model where as a physical medicine and rehab doc, you know, we focus on the whole person, not just a single system or a single organ. And I feel like you as a chiropractor as well, you know, that's how you're taught. And it's a really synergistic, um, it's a synergistic opportunity for everybody, you know, when you, when you go see a chiropractor, you're not, you know, if your, your foot hurts, you know, sometimes you have to look at the low back and same thing with the neck, you know, what's going on with the posture, what's going on even with your feet. It all translates and it all goes together. And it's so important to really see people as a whole. And, you know, sometimes my patients ask me, you know, what, why are you examining that part of me? That's not what hurts. Like, well, <laughs> you know, I have a little bit of a clue. <laughs> and I know you guys do the same. You know, it, it, you're right. And, and 
I remember the, the, some of the best part of my education is, is when I was working with a neurosurgeon, you know, we had some voluntary rotations in, in, in college and, and I, I elected to work with a neurosurgeon. Well, after I graduated, there was a little bit of downtime between I could get my state license and so I ended up working for this guy for the next, you know, three years doing exams and histories on, you know, 10, 15 new patients a month and it was like a, yeah. it really was like a, a modified internship but it really helped me to kind of triage patients. But you know, in, in one aspect, it was great because I got to see all the MRIs and, you know, I was, mm -hmm. was in surgery and I got to see the other side, but I also, it's where I started to see that gap between traditional surgery and what conservative could do. And, and so when I left him full-time, um, I went in 2000, and so we've been full-time since 2000. Awesome. And uh, just from then, I've had mentor to different mentor to different mentor and different teachers along the way, and I feel like it, it's through their knowledge that really has pushed us into kind of that next layer. Yeah, mentorship is great. I serve as a mentor for younger docs that come out and they just don't know what to do, and especially ones that are trying to open their own practice and be a small business owner on top of doing the medicine. It's a whole different <laughs> level of education. And it's awesome to be our own bosses. And I know you're you're a big fan of that as well. I am. You know, I went to a, a you know, most of the, that what we learn in school is all clinical and we get very little, you mm -hmm. know, business um, and insurance knowledge in school, but I remember going to a continuing education and, I, and this guy named Nathan Jones, he looked at me, he goes, you're not just a chiropractor, he goes, you're a CEO. And when he said that, <laughs> man, it just something gonged on the inside that says, you know what, I gotta, I gotta learn how to run a business, not just how to, how to fix bodies. And, and, you know, ever since him, you know, he really kind of helped me learn about, you know, how to value yourself and negotiate with banks and, you know, some of the, some of the things that you have to have in business, but, from there, you know, I, I segue to another gentleman named, you know, Kevin Heron. He taught me all about extremities and, mm -hmm. and, and really helped me with, you know, looking at the joints of the foot to the knee, to the hip, to the ankle. And, uh, you know, he had a six or seven part series. And I remember flying out to, to Boise and he actually let me stay at his house and watch him in his practice. And so that That's was some, cool. some super valuable experience, you know, with him. And uh, probably the, you know, that just really kind of helped me with that mechanical layer. And um, when, I got into nutrition and functional medicine, it was kind of when some of these cholesterol lowering drugs came out mm -hmm. and some of these patients started having pains that weren't responding right. to some of these mechanical only strategies. And that's when we started to shift going into you know functional and nutrition and looking at how the body is is basically powered, how the physiologies that you and I learned in school that were, were normal, but then they kind of led us into the pathology part and didn't let us try to get patients back to you know, functioning, and right. so I think that that's a huge area that is, uh, you know, some of that information wasn't all right, wasn't all wrong, but you know. <laughs> there's, no, I agree. There's other ways to look at those systems besides, you know, just pharmaceuticals, you know, but hey, we're all a little bit right. We all need, you know, some med you know, some med medicinals every now and then. We need, you know, minimally invasive, and we need surgery, and so I don't want to disparage the other side. Of I'm just course. saying, man, it, it, it worked out a lot different, so. And I, I mean, I see more of the pharmaceutical side of it, and Patients ask me, like, why, why won't you prescribe me that NSAID or that anti-inflammatory? I'm like, because it actually is worse for you than benefiting you, even though it's approved by the FDA and it's for this indication, supposedly. It has black box warnings from a cardiac standpoint. And so my job as a doc, your job as a doc, do no harm, number First. one. And so it's all about educating patients and even educating the other docs in the practice. You have two younger docs with you and they're fabulous, but you're their mentor. Right. And you have to teach them how to do those, the right things for patients that aren't learned in the, the classroom setting. And they're not learned, you know, just by reading a book. It's every day, day to day, business practice, especially hands on with patients and being engaged with patients to know how you really need to serve them. Right. You know, I tell my patients a lot of times, we, we call it practice for a reason. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it, it's not that we're not, you know, trained, it's just, like I said, there's a certain base foundation that they, that you're held to and some standards, but you know, it's when those patients don't follow those protocols that you have to start stepping outside and you have to say, look, I need to be able to maybe somewhat experiment a little bit as long as I'm within the safeguard. But you know, about three years ago, um, I, I got into a, a great inten uh, mentorship program with an, another new doctor called Dr. Alan uh, Bonebreak. And you know, he really, changed my mm -hmm. perception of how to see the body and almost like what I call see the matrix. And you know, his, his background is, you know, a million and a half dollars worth of chiropractic techniques. He's a master trained acupuncturist on four different continents under four different techniques, three master's oh. degrees. 
uh, in, a, in a reference library that he did before the internet that's nearly <laughs> half a million dollars of books and journals. I mean, the wow. old school way of just reading cover to cover and you know, this guy's one of those four hour night sleepers in a photographic memory. <laughs> and so there's nothing like halfway through your pro career and finding out that your 40,000 hours of research is nothing in comparison to this guy's 80,000. But yeah. the smartest thing I did was say, teach me everything you know before you retire, expire. I, it's okay that I don't know everything you know, but I learned so much from him that I'm hoping to impart into that next generation below me, much like what you're doing. And the results we're getting are just phenomenal. So it's, it's not the... It's a different way of looking at the body. It's not just stretching the tight muscle and strengthening mm -hmm. the weak muscles, trying to figure out why is the muscle tight, why is the muscle weak. Right. And, and like you said, sometimes you gotta go to the toe or sometimes you gotta go upstairs to the head or you gotta go into the nervous system or you gotta go into the chemistry or you gotta go into the emotions. Mm -hmm. And you gotta find out if these patients are responding and you'll quickly know, you know if you're on the right place or not. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I, I tell my patients like, have you had your oil changed? You know, <laughs> you can put all those shiny new tires on a car and new body and new paint but it's not going to go anywhere if the transmission doesn't work so you got to take care of the inside <laughs> first yeah everything is is connected and it's funny i use a similar car analogy in my practice i'm like <laughs> chiropractic we're going to help with your tires man you don't want to drive with your car like this right <laughs> but you have to have a battery and you have to have an alternator and you yeah. have to have you know gas in the tank and the right kind of fuel in the car but then at the same time if you do get them running you got to have a destination you got to have a reason right you know otherwise you're just still sitting there on the on the freeway you know idling and so exactly goals either, are important yeah, goals. I mean, you got to figure out, you know, a lot of times people come into us and they think that we're here to fix them. And like, you know, a lot of times we, we think we're here to fix them, but we're really just a part of their journey. And we're trying to help them, you right. know, help their bodies, help themselves. And that's what we do almost every day. And we get to see some phenomenal results and patients get better and we get to sleep well at night thinking, you know, <laughs> we made a difference in that person. So education, that's the way. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. So what other things um, do you do or techniques in your practice that are different or different? beneficial to patients? You know, I always start with a, a kind of a four-part system. I tell most people I want to get them out of pain first. I'd like to restore their flexibility to normal, establish their, their foundation and their posture, and, okay. then, and then strengthen it. And then usually I like to switch to chemistry. And so we uh, we, we do a lot of questionnaires for their health assessments. Uh, I have them do a five to seven day food log. And I have them match different symptoms that they're trying to you know work with so we can start to identify maybe there's something they're eating or consuming. Um, you know, one of my my favorite patients of all time when I was starting to learn about this stuff was, you know, an autoimmune disease and, and gluten. And, and mm -hmm. I dripped on this lady for, you know, eight years to try to go gluten free. She didn't want anything to do with it. <laughs> Finally, about 50 years old, it's time for a colonoscopy. And the other uh, physician suggested, have you ever tried going off gluten? And she goes, funny you say that. Eight years ago, my chiropractor's mm -hmm. been telling me that. And uh, so she finally made that decision. And in about three and a half weeks, all of her rheumatoid symptoms resolved. Yep. And, you know, from then on, it's like, you know, if people don't understand what the power of putting the right food in and taking out the wrong food. Absolutely. You really understand that it can really mess with your health. And so between that, um, we also like to look at blood work. I feel like when you look at blood work, you know, with a different vantage point than medical doctors, um, you know, medicine's good for disease. And sometimes we need drugs for disease, but I don't treat disease. I like to look for the dysfunctions back to the physiology right. before it gets there. And so if we can try to help them modulate their their lifestyles with diet with you know some supplementation with education with exercise and it happens to impact their disease in, in, in a great that's a good way and so <laughs> absolutely most people I think you know physicians are happy to see blood pressures go down or yeah. blood sugars are improve or you know the patient can increase their activities of day to live in and, and actually exercise and so we really have a pretty strong prevention um, mentality and mindset as well not just pain Fantastic. I'm a big proponent of that and I'd love to get more on that. So we're going to take a quick commercial break right now and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more about nutrition with Dr. Darren Mitchell here from uh, Natural Health Houston. Welcome back to Pain Diaries. Dr. Suzanne Manzi here with Performance Pain and Sports Medicine and my guest, Dr. Darren Mitchell from Natural Health Houston. So we're gonna segue back into talking all about the importance of nutrition and why we see that as 
a healing property, especially with patients with pain, which is why they come to see us in the first place. Absolutely. So um, I, I thought one of the things we might talk about is something both that you and I have done personally. And um, I don't know if anybody else after COVID gained a few <laughs> LBs or, you know, <laughs> but uh, it was one of those times where, you know, everybody kind of reacted and we were all super stressed out. And so people didn't make, you know, as good of choices with their food and alcohol and their life became sedentary because all of a sudden it's illegal to go walk on the beach. And so exercises didn't, you know, sit, fit into our lifestyles. But And all those COVID babies like mine <laughs> and COVID, talk about pregnancy COVID pregnancies weight, and, and COVID pregnancy weight. weight. <laughs> and uh, so probably about, I don't know, Three or four years ago, a colleague of mine who, you know, and a company that we're affiliated with, Prime My Body, you know, said, "Hey, we're having a beta test group. I'd like to have you in it." And so I said, "You know what? Hey, this is, sounds like something I I want to do. You know, it's whole food, it's minimal supplements, mm -hmm. it's not exercise contingent." And so I kind of, for the first time in my career, went into something, not based upon my own research and. Uh, what I like to call paralysis by analysis. Sometimes <laughs> you don't move because until you get it in your head, I just actually followed this guy's results and they were such amazing results that I did it myself. And, and something happened during that time of when I lost you know, 20 pounds in, in 30 days and the first 10 pounds were fat. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute, my books say that you can't lose that fat without losing muscle and I lost virtually no muscle. Mm -hmm. And so I did it. You know, I, I quickly um, said, hey, I got to figure this if this is as good as for me or, you know, so I put, I had one of my doctors do it. And, and one of my female doctors, Dr. Jody, she did it. And man, she just had she amazing results when nothing yeah. wasn't quite working. Keto wasn't working. The low carb, you know, exercise model wasn't working. The calorie in, calorie out model was working. And so she really, really lost a lot of weight. And so that's when I said, hey, this is good for everybody. And we were seeing decrease in visceral fat, which is the biggest thing I love about it. And all the pro-inflammatory cytokines that we see right. that, that funnel this inflammation that, you know, patients come in and you can see the, the swelling that they have in it and their blood pressures and mm -hmm. some of their insulin resistance and some things like that. And so I think about what, two years ago you did it? How long ago I did, did you it? Do it? So it was actually this year. It was this I started year? January 7th Okay. and finished a month later and I lost over 20 two pounds and now I'm currently 30 pounds down. I've been able to keep it off, build muscle back up, but I did it because I needed a detox. I needed a detox off of COVID life and right. post-pregnancy weight was terrible. I'd, after the second one, I just couldn't get it off and I just kept getting fluffier and fluffier and my workouts were always just being overeaten and I realized, okay, we need to change the way we eat at home. And I, I thought we ate pretty healthy, right. but then when we did that, true cleanse and the true, I'm going to measure my food, I'm going to measure everything, and I'm going to eat exactly what it says. I'm not going to cheat. And I didn't cheat. Right. I, I might have had a little extra protein here and there, but otherwise it was, there was no cheating, which it was a pound a day at least. It was amazing. <laughs> you know, it's funny something you say that. You get almost gotten this, this scale high because you see it just come down and uh -huh. come down. And you're like, and you see your body because you take the pictures, right? You did yes. the before and afters. That, and that, first, that first one is kind of like, mm, mm, you know, it's a little humbling. I don't want to show anybody that. You know, that. I don't want to show anything. But, you know, it's also when you do that second picture on the next week, you're like, man, I saw a big difference. Then you do the third one and you see a big and difference. And your jeans start falling And then like, your clothes start falling off. And, and you lose a chin or two. Yeah. And, and, and next thing you know, your, your psychology changes. Your yes. attitude changes. You know, you start having a little bit better posture and a little bit better carriage. And, you know, so after the results that I've had and Dr. Jody had and you've had, we've right. definitely incorporated this in our practice. And so as we're getting close to the holiday season, you know, I always try to tell patients it's, it's, it's one thing to, to prevent disease, it's another thing to live life. And so we need that healthy balance between, you know, it's good to spend time with family and friends and, and you know, there's some, some good memories and emotions. Right. But you know, between Halloween and then Thanksgiving and then all these Christmas and holiday parties and then New Year's and if you're a diehard, you'll even push it into, you know, Valentine's and Easter. But but literally <laughs> at some point we never get off of the the consumerism, you know, right. junk food. And then you know the birthdays. Everybody's got a birthday. Birthdays and I you know, <laughs> and next thing you know, it's that ten pounds I want to take off this year. Uh oh, well then I added right. another one here. And then you kinda wonder how all of these kind of stack up on each other. And so this is about the time of the year where we start, you know, kind of priming the pump a little bit and saying, exactly. "All right, people, let's 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 live life." But you know, when it comes to J one, you know, we're gonna we're gonna get a hold of this, and we're not doing this just for weight loss, right? right. We're doing this for, you know, cleaning out the liver. We're improving insulin resistance. We're trying to take down that visceral fat and inflammation. We're letting it go of a lot of that peripheral resistance, so we can make sure our blood pressures and uh, and uh, and our blood sugars stay, you know, right. right where they need to be. And 
And I tell you what, there's there's nothing more fun when that person comes in on that on that <laughs> testimonial and they say, "Man, I lost 30 pounds." I know. You know, That's but you amazing. know what? You didn't tell me about my shopping bill was going to be so high. Right. And I'm like, you know, I'm okay with you buying new clothes because, <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's not the kind of money I don't think people mind, you know, spending, right. you know. So. And, yeah, just that visceral fat reduction that you would see on the scale. And even my, my new scale, I mean, it wasn't an expensive scale, but it does that little analysis. And mm -hmm. it shows, you know, the fat reduction, the body mass index just drastically going down. And then my metabolic age, I lost like five pounds years for my <laughs> metabolic age. So I went back to like being in my 30s, even though I'm in my 40s, which was, I was like, this is great. Well, and, 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 and like I said, it's whole food. It's not right. supplements. It's not, I mean, it's not just, you know, factory food or bars and it's shakes, you know, it's, it's not, you know, microwavable stuff that, you know, it's not, I mean, you're eating real, you know, live, <laughs> fresh food. And, and I don't know about you, but your palate changes, right? Oh, completely. And so you fall in love with a blueberry again. You're like, this is the best blueberry. I still eat them every, every morning. Day, I am, you know. It's like my favorite part of my breakfast every day, my blueberries with you, my nut butter. <laughs> I mean, your taste buds change, but exactly. again, but your hypothalamus and your, you know, because you're doing that, yep. you're actually reprogramming the body. And then it almost, as you come back from being, you know, the low cal, low fat part of it, and they start adding all this stuff, you're like, well, surely I'm gonna gain some weight by putting all the right. stuff back in, and what happens? It, your body's reset, and, and it's you like burn you're it. just burning, because right. you have a clean engine now. Right. Everything's clean, burning. Absolutely. And so now if I have a piece of cake, you fuel and don't up. get five pounds on my scale, I, right. it just burns through, and it's clean, and you know, I, I try and eat now at least 95, 90 to 95% clean, and the weight's stayed off. Yeah. I still have, alcohol, I still have cake, I still have cookies, but in moderation, right. not after every meal, like COVID was teaching me to do. So mm. I hope we never have to see that, that time know. frame again. I, I think we learned, uh, you know, what not to do, you know, in, in some instances, but I always kind of tell people, you know, it, when it gets to cold and flu season, is it really because it's cold and flu season or is it because mm -hmm. our sugar intake goes up? Yep. Is it because our stress with our family and holidays go up? Is it because we stop getting out in the sun and our vitamin D goes right. down and so we know what it does for balancing our, our immune system. So, And the cancer is associated with being overweight and, and obese and inflammation. There's CDC recognizes 13 cancers associated with obesity. I mean, so this stuff can put you in the grave at some point. It's scary. So, you know, I'm all about promoting people's health promoting wellness and promoting longevity because we have there's some things to do here on this planet absolutely <laughs> it, you know it's life is not a you know a battle it's a game and you have to know how to play the game you have yep. to know the rules of the game and and, and I enjoy think, it and enjoy it but I think that there's certain you know consumerism you know groups that are right. are happy to, to take advantage of our health and and our, our sure. lack of health it's true and you know of course we as providers you know love to see patients but I tell you what one of the things I love the most is when I get a discharge of patient. And I say, "Hey, you can come back and see me when you need me." Exactly. You know, it's and a that, great feeling. that's a great feeling. And you know, I'd love to see five or ten of your friends instead of you know managing your your mm -hmm. condition and seeing it over and over and over. And I think that's what's really fun when you know that you you taught that patient how to fish, not just fed them, right? And then they, now they know how to do it themselves. Exactly. And then, and don't get me wrong, you've done it, uh, like I said, in your clinic and my clinic. Other patients tell other patients without oh. you ever having to even mention it, right? For sure. And For so sure. They come results back, the results speak themselves. Uncanny. It's yeah. amazing. So I've always loved that when, you know, somebody that you impacted impacted somebody else. And yep. so that's pretty rewarding. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Mitchell, thank you so much for being here with me today on Pain Diaries. Thank you for having me. Abs absolutely. So if you are all interested in getting treatment here in Houston, Texas, we are happy to work together to help you get better because as you know from Pain Diaries, you have to take care of you so you can continue to take care of business. Take care and we'll see you on another episode of Pain Diaries. This has been a Now Media Television feature presentation. All rights reserved. Thank you.